Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 7, Organic Chemistry. In this first series of videos, we're going to be looking at nomenclature. Nomenclature is all about the rules that we use to name different organic compounds. Now, organic chemistry is basically the study of carbon compounds, and there's a huge range of these different types of compounds. And so we need some sort of system, systematic way of being able to name these. So in this first video, we're going to be looking at the specific group of organic compounds known as the hydrocarbons. In this video, we're going to be looking at the naming of the three key groups of hydrocarbons, and they are the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. The particular area of the syllabus to which this video relates is this particular point here, where we need to understand the nomenclature of organic chemicals up to eight carbons in length using the IUPAC conventions and also uh, with certain types of compounds that may contain methyl or ethyl branch chains. Now, this is a lot of terminology at this point in time, so let's see if we can break it down. So the first group that we want to have a look at are the alkanes. Now the alkanes are hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons are compounds which contain just carbon and hydrogen in their structure. They're also known as saturated hydrocarbons because the alkanes are characterized by a single bond. Now there's a number of different rules that we need to use when we're working through the naming of these different types of compounds, but the two key ones that we need to start with are a prefix and a suffix. The prefix is an indication of the number of carbon atoms. So we need to count up the number of carbons in the longest continuous chain. So if there are side chains and you, and you move off to the side, you can't rejoin the main chain. You must have one continuous. It can uh, bend but it must be one continuous line of carbons and whatever number that is, that will correspond to a name. If there is only one carbon, the name, uh, the prefix will be meth. Uh, if there are two, it's eth. Three would be prope. Four would be but. And then we have pent, hex, hept, and oct, which are probably prefixes you're a little bit more familiar with. And that's for 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we're only expected at this point to go up to 8 carbons in length. So that should be the maximum size that we need to deal with. The second part of the name, or the suffix, is the functional group. Now, in this case, the functional group is a single bond between adjacent carbons. The single bond uh, is what characterizes the alkanes. And you can actually see from the name alkane itself, we actually have... Uh, what, what effectively would in um, algebra account for an X? The ALK is like the general um, term here, could be anything, um, depending on the number of carbons. And the AIN is the specific functional group. So this remains, and we substitute ALK for however many carbons we have as our prefix. So here you can see there are one and two carbons, the, the, black, the little black balls are carbons. So there are two carbons in this compound. And so therefore, the prefix would be eth. Because it's only a single bond between the two carbons, then that means that we have an ane as our suffix, and therefore we have a compound known as ethane. Now here's another one. Here's a compound that I've made out of the little molly mod kits. This particular one has one, two, three, four carbons, and then a number of hydrogens around those. As a little aside, it's important that when you are drawing, and I'll draw this for you in just a moment in terms of its structural formula, you need to make sure that every carbon has four bonds. Now, occasionally they may bond with more than one bond between two atoms, um, but either way, they always need to have, all our carbons need to have four bonds. So it's a good uh, quick way of double checking that you've drawn uh, a molecule correctly. 
So this one has four. So if we were to draw this particular molecule, then it would look like this. So what I do is make sure that I've got enough um, bonds to ensure that there are four bonds around every carbon. And once I've put all of the important um, things that I need to put in, then I just fill everything else up with hydrogens. So in this case, it's all hydrogens around the carbons. So we have uh, a four carbon and three, five, seven, ten hydrogens. So the molecular formula for this compound would be C4H10. But what's its name? Well, its name um, is the name that we give to a compound that has four carbons. So therefore, that would be its prefix. And its suffix would be the fact that there's only single bonds, so therefore that's going to be an ane. So the name of this compound would be butane. When we're talking about methyl groups, what we're talking about is an additional hydrocarbon that sits on the side. Now if I was to add this to this particular molecule, if I put it in the position on the end, then all I'm going to do is to increase the length of the chain. So now I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five carbons in this chain. And so therefore, since it's still only single bonds, it would now be called pent. But if instead of attaching it to an end, I decided to attach it to one of these uh, more central ones, then when I'm counting my longest chain, I can count one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, but one of these ones is not anymore going to be part of my longest chain. And that means that if I, if I um, orient this in such a way as to leave this little extra group sitting above that main chain, then you can see that the main chain now only has four carbons, so it's back to being butane. But I need to take account of this extra little group over here, this CH3 group. And this CH3 group here, um, being one carbon, is going to be called a methyl. So you remember from the uh, previous slide, we were looking at the fact that we had methyl and ethyl groups. So methyls are where we have one carbon and ethyls are where we have two carbons. And that name is going to go at the front of the rest of our name. So if we if we go back and remember that our four carbon alkane was butane, then if we've got this little side chain sitting here, then we're going to call it methyl butane. Now one extra complication which will arise as we uh, get further into our nomenclature rules is that occasionally you may need to locate where that particular methyl group is. In this case, we know it can't be on an end carbon because that would increase the size of the chain and go from four to five carbons and, and therefore we would have a pent rather than a but. Uh, but where it is currently, it's sitting on one of the two middle carbons. So if we were to count the longest chain, which is one, two, three, four, you can see that our methyl group comes off the second carbon. Of course, if I count from the other end, one, two, three, four, then it would be coming off the third carbon. So what do I do if I'm not sure if it's coming off the second or the third? Well, what I would need to do is I would need to select the smallest number. So the smallest number in this case would be two. But irrespective of which way I orient this molecule, it's only going to be two. It cannot be three, because if I count three from one end, it would be two from the other end. So this is uh, an issue that we're going to be looking at a little bit when we look at nomenclature, which is the issue of what we call ambiguity. Numbering is critically important where we have ambiguity. So if I was to say to you, draw methyl butane, and you weren't sure where you should put the methyl group, I would need to give you a number in order to locate that particular methyl group. However, when I ask you to draw methyl butane, there is only one option for you, and therefore I don't need to give you a number in this case. 
we'll look at some examples as we go through these videos of where this uh, this ambiguity arises and we have to be very specific in our numbering systems. The second group of hydrocarbons that we need to look at is the first of our unsaturated hydrocarbons. These are the hydrocarbons that have a double bond. You can see in the example that I have on the slide that we have a double bond in this position here. The double bond is between the two carbons. What it's actually done is it's reduced the number of hydrogens by two, one from each of the carbons. And so now if we were to draw this representative molecule, you can see it would look something like this. A double bond between the carbons and two hydrogens off each of the two carbons. The fact that there is one, two carbons means our prefix for two carbons is eth. But what's the suffix? Well, this particular group are called alkenes, and alkenes are the ones that are characterized by this double bond. So where we have a double bond, uh, which in this case we do, the ending now changes from being an ane to an ene. So the suffix is ene, -E, and therefore the name of this compound would be ethene. Now if we go back to our example, here we had a... Um, butane and so if I just change this molecule slightly and add some of the little bendy uh, bonds so that I can create a double bond I can put a double bond here in the center of my butane so you can see in order for me to create um, a, a version of this four carbon compound that has a double bond and therefore is now an ene and no longer an ane, I have to remove two hydrogens. So how do we name this particular compound? Well, it now has four carbons, so four carbons would be but, and the fact that it has a double bond means that it would be an ene. So this would be called butene. However, remember we were talking about the fact that sometimes the location or the position of a functional group, like a double bond, may be ambiguous. There may be more than one solution. And in fact, in this case, there is. If I tell you to construct a model or to draw butene, I haven't given you enough information because there's more than one version of butene. So, what I need to do in order to check that is to do my counting again for my carbons. So here I have one, two, three, four. Either way, one, two, three, four. So when I look at this, my double bond is between the second and the third carbon. My rule is smallest number. So the smallest number in this case would be two. So Butene is not exactly correct. A better answer would be but to ene. And that's where the double bond is sitting in the middle. Now we can show that there's another version of this simply by um, swapping one of these groups to the other end. If I move this group to the other end, then what you can see I have now, and I haven't changed anything of the same number of atoms I had to begin with, but now you can see that the double bond is at an end. It's between the first and the second. Now we're not going to call it the third and the fourth because we're using the smallest numbers, that's our rule. But this time the smallest number between one and two is one. So there is another version which is but one. This is what we talk about when we talk about ambiguity. If I ask you to draw butene, you can see that now there are two options, butene and butene. So therefore, I can't ask you to draw something that general. I must be more specific and tell you which of these molecules I want you to draw. The addition of the double bond does create some um, 
extra things for us to deal with. And the other interesting thing that we'll look at later on is the double bond is basically telling us there are four electrons now in this region. So one of these covalent bonds is two electrons, but when we've got a double, we've got four electrons. Now that's pretty unstable. So this particular group are quite chemically reactive, certainly more so than the corresponding alkane. But we have one more group to look at. The final group that we need to look at are the alkynes, and they are characterized by a triple bond. So where we have carbons, we have a triple bond between the two carbons. And you can see that here is a triple bond between the two carbons in this particular compound. Again, because there are only two compounds, our prefix for two carbons is eth. And the group of hydrocarbons, which are also unsaturated hydrocarbons that have a triple bond, are called the alkynes. So the second part of the name is ine. And so in this case, a triple bond would give you the y-n-e suffix, and therefore the name would be ethine. Just as we did with our um, transition from butane to butene, we can also turn butene or butuanine into butuanine. I'm hoping that as we look at uh, enough of these examples, you'll start to realize uh, each time I'm adding one of these bonds, I'm taking away two hydrogens. So the formula uh, changes for each of these compounds as well. You can see that the um, that the compound that I have now has a triple bond between the first and the second carbon. Because of that, if I was to draw that for you, uh, I would have uh, a carbon, 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 triple bond to another carbon. Uh, it's always useful to draw the carbon skeleton first, put any of the double, triple bonds that are going in. You can see then I need four, so I have one there. It's, you can see this particular carbon here already has four bonds. Three and one is four, so there are no hydrogens attached to that one. But then there are two here, and there are another three here. So here is my uh, compound, and this particular compound uh, has the double, uh, the triple bond between the first and the second carbon. Of course, I don't go from the other end because that would give me a three and a four, and my rule is smallest numbers. So the smallest number here is the number one. So four carbons is but, so this would be but one iron. Just as I did previously, I could add a methyl group coming in. Um, if I did put that methyl group coming in here, then, uh, for example, it obviously couldn't come off the first carbon because then it would uh, turn it into a five carbon chain. It can't come off the second carbon either because there is already four bonds um, that are uh, in existence with this uh, carbon to the two carbons either side of it, so there's nothing else. But it could go onto this one here. And then we would need to look at the fact that we now have uh, one for our triple bond, but two and three for our methyl group. Now the hydrocarbons are such an important group that we will deal with them separately in their own little section after we've looked at some of these names. You'll need a little bit of practice. Of course, it's also possible that there may be more than one uh, double or triple bond present in the molecule, and that also creates a few extra little challenges, and I won't go into those now, but I'm sure you'll get the chance to have a look at those in class. Do plenty of practice, and thanks for watching.